So, uh, good evening, folks. I'm joined with Jojo Mojo here, and this is Disagree, the captain for WCU Slate. Uh, we're coming at you from the WCU Crimson game against North... North Central Technical College. Thank you. North Central Technical College, which we will refer to more than likely as NTC throughout the stream. Um... We're starting on Busan as our first map. We will see Nona versus Kaniro, is I would assume how you pronounce that name. Uh, both very agile tanks from what I'm seeing with their tank choices. Nona does have the rank advantage with Kaniro only having a silver rank. Uh, Zero, which is a star factor in our flank team here, will be Zero and Kuk. Our two DPSs will be going against Dragorio, who is NTC's captain, and Sharp NX, which Dragorio is definitely a star factor in this match here once we see this load, as they are masters in DPS, which is the highest um, out of everyone in this match. Sharp uh, and Dragorio does main Genji. I don't know if you caught that there when I was in the career profile. We also see Sharp MX uh, have... Peak in gold, he's currently ranked in... Or, sorry, peak in platinum, he's currently ranked in gold. Uh, he does play a lot of Sombra and Tracer, it appears, as Tracer is their highest season. And it looks like we are going into the match now. So, we will keep you posted with those uh, rolls. We do see Majarshan and Megusaka um, starting on heals for us with Arya and Rusted on heals for them. I am just along for the ride again tonight, folks. I am here just to give you guys an outsider's perspective. I've played a couple of games of Overwatch instead of not playing League of Legends, namely Overwatch 2. However, I'm still not quite as versed as Disagree is here. So yep. I'll be kind of doing the same thing as last night as I did with League of Legends, just calling out when it looks like there's a big fight and what it looks like to me. And we do... There we go. And we do see we are starting on Mecha base, WCU Slate coming, or er, Crimson, sorry, coming out with a more of just a brawl comp into what appears to be NTC's dive comp. This is the Winston into Zarya is going to be an interesting combo with both of their new buffs with Zarya's new health and Winston's new double jump pack versus only having one from Overwatch 1. Uh... Yeah, uh, not much to say until we get into an actual team fight here. Which, yeah, this was an interesting dive from KK Nero as they dove in, but uh, KK Nero does find the first kill, finding Majarshan, though. Uh, as I said, Dragorio is going to be a major factor in this match, but we do see Nona take him out on the Zarya. Uh... Looks like they're just retreating back to point to make sure they cap it while WCU Crimson does reset and are going to contest point now. And it, I think you missed call there for just a second because it looks like it was actually Lucky Sokka who got knocked out, not Majarshan. Because I saw the little death symbol up there as I saw with Kedra. I might have been wrong with that, but I do know Majarshan did die in that fight as I also saw that death symbol. And there he goes. Right yep, there. we do see a lot of deaths coming out from the side of WCU Crimson. Dragorio kind of taking a majority of those kills for himself. Uh, and it is a contested one to three here for this point. Yep. And there we go. We see NTC take control back with WCU gathering all four of the five together now, getting ready to come up and push again. We do see a Sombra trying to get an early hack off, but Zero is there to counter that hack. Dragorio setting up in a good position here. Uh, we do see Nano already ready, and Dragorio is very close to Blade, so we will probably see a Nano Blade here, which heavily could be detrimental for uh, WCU Crimson. But also on the side of WCU Crimson, we also see Nano Blade coming out or getting ready to pop. Uh, we see EMP come out for NTC as well as Beat. We also see Nano pop there with no blade, but we also see Nano popped for us as well. Uh, but it looks like we will hold three alts heading into this next fight. 
Real to 201, but one quickly coming up there for MTC. As you can see, KK Nero having 86% of their ult ready to go. And Jarshan the closest on WCU with an unlimited ult at 72% now. Yep. I would not be surprised if we do see a grab into Pulse Bomb here from WCU. But WCU needs to get their move on because currently it looks like NTC keeping possession, getting mighty close to that full possession to capture that point. Yep. This is a best two out of three if I if memory serves for the capture of the point. That is correct. And just some map statistics for you here. Um, Busan from the side of WCU has just always been one of our sh worst suits in terms of uh, maps. This is from Slate and Crimson. We do see the contest coming out on point here as we see a cap try and happen. And it looks like we do see Blade Pop from Ultra Cook here. They do not find point just yet, but it does look like they will get point after the Somber goes down. And there it goes, WCU getting point once again and trying to maintain that control. All it takes is a little bit of a team wipe though, or even just four, and that might just be this round for WC or in NTC's favor. Correct. Uh, we will see that we will have trans this next fight from Majarshan, which will be a big factor in just trying to stop one of those alts. But we do see EMP coming close on the side of uh, NTC. Majarshan uh, got wiped with Zero getting two kills. No, no getting one finding the sombra that's and there we go that lucio is also knocked out so it looks like wcu is going to maintain point possession here and try and force them to stay in their spawn area which can be beneficial but we need to make sure that we keep that point and we get it to get that push and if we can here try and keep at least two of that one if not two of their team knocked or at least below half in terms of health, then we will be able... You see EMP come out here, though, with Dragorio finding the kills. And as my co-caster here said, this might just be the wipe for WCU here for the map one. Yep. That team wipe just completely sent it in. And as I was saying, that WCU just needs to hold a couple below half. NTC quickly answers and actually comes back, taking that team wipe just to finish out that game. Yep. Quite unfortunate, but it looks like we are getting ready for round two here in about 30 seconds. And it's a little bit different than my game of Rocket yep. League, where these maps aren't these maps are quick and they will go fast if you are not careful. And we are in Busan downtown. Both teams gearing up with a very similar comp. We do see WCU Crimson going in with more of a dive comp now, while NTC stays with their regular comp. Nona switching over to, I believe it is D.Va. That is correct. And it looks like Ultra is that. I forget who that one is. That is Echo. She is able to copy abilities with her ultimate, which might be a big factor here in this fight, depending on what abilities we can get out of it. Uh, and as we are, un we are about to find out where this control point is, but we are seeing a huge fight right now between WCU and NTC. And it looks like Objective A is being captured by WCU. And as I say that, they just about stop. And there they go. WCU getting the early possession, trying to stay on top of it. We do see Genji getting in some work here with Winston behind. It looks like they're being forced off point as Dragorio finds both DP or both heals, I should say. And the Sombra finds the Zero. But it is Tank. Tank takes out the Tank. But Nona is demeked into both DPSs of NTC. And they are retreating, which is interesting that they didn't just go for the pick there. Well, I think they were actually trying to get back to the point to try and get that control and get that percentage up early. That's what they did last time, of yep. getting that contest and getting that early percentage and control, and then just holding up throughout the match. The only reason WC was able to come back in that is because of that small overtime period. Yep. We'll see if this match fares any differently. We do see... Genji is going to go down here, though, because he overcommitted to a dive. Uh, we will see the Winston also go down here. But we do trade for Majarshan. I do not quite know who that character is. I'm still learning to cast myself. But we do see a 2-1 to one trade there for in WCU's favor. There's a hack on Megasuka. Or Megasaka. Yep. Arya goes down. So does Russ Redwood. 
which is both their healers, but Genji has made it back to point. And they are contesting. Winston dove into point here by himself, though, which is probably not the best choice, as they're now just feeding their ults to WCU. WCU up now. Three ults to two with NTC's ult count getting climbing close. Two of their three remaining needing that ult over 80%. Yep. And now they're almost there, all three. And again, we might see Nano Blade uh, coming into this fight as Ana will have Nano and Genji will have Blade for NTC. Uh, Self destruct would be a big bomb here, but Winston still does have those shields, so there is a high chance that they won't find anyone with it. We see EMP go out, uh, and we do see the Genji taken down, which is going to be a big play in favor of WCU. And they're what? Well, that almost misspoke huge, there. That we, very yeah. huge trade for WCU, getting a two to almost a two to one with that Winston getting really low. We do see the duplicate come out on Winston, so now it is two tanks versus one in terms of this fight. Now it is two tanks on just their heels coming out for NTC here. Diva is demeched, but she does pop the self-destruct to get the remech after the self-destruct goes off. And gets back in the mech. It's now just Lucio on point. She gets that on a 10 player kill streak. WCU up 85% to 52. Quickly climbing those boards and trying to just finish it out, get that one kill, and there they go. WCU looking here just to quickly hold and get this point back and get this game tied. Yep. But as we also as we saw though last round, this is still anyone's game, even at 99%. As all it takes is NTC to take over the point and also hold it. Here we go. Here's the contest. Overtime still going on. We do see Genji Blade come out here with no nano though. We do see Trans still on the field. I'm surprised Majarshan has not popped that yet, but he also might not be in the fight, so. And that will do it. WCU coming back in that one, taking it by a bit more of a commanding fashion in that game. Yep, so we go into map three, which is Sanctum. If I remember correctly, it's Sanctum. I don't fully remember the name, but uh, for any Overwatch players, they will know this map, mainly called as Drum, as there is a canonical giant drum in the middle of the map. Uh... Usually we will see both teams push for the smaller drum up here to the right of, right or left of their spawns just for that early high ground. But with both of these comps being dive comps, I would not be surprised if they dive point here. It seems like they're all going for the Obi-Wan Kenobi strategy here, trying to take that high, that high ground and just getting that upper advantage quick and early. Diva and rushing in, trying to I do stand corrected though. They're actually neither team went for the high ground. Uh, Nona does go for one of the sides though, just to get that potential high ground. But both teams did dive point as I heavily predicted they would do. Early two kills against NTC here, giving a little bit of an advantage in terms of WCU's favorite. And there's the third against Drag. And fourth and fifth, and that's a team wipe for WCU <laughs> or in favor of WCU. And that, I believe, means that we are likely going to see NTC take a second here to regroup, get a good team push, and try and get all five at once, trying to knock out one or two of WCU's players just to have that advantage going into a bigger fight. That would be the ideal plan here. Uh, if we'll see that, I'm not sure, as it does seem like Drag and Kick and Nero, the past two maps have had different ideas of what to do and have split off from each other just to try and get a singular pick. Here we see another huge team fight coming in. WCU getting close on one of their heels. Not quite able to get it. We do trying to stay alive. Yep. We do see D.Va get slept there, which... And we see a purples coming out from both sides. Um, one thing we should point out is uh, going into tonight's match, there are three heroes banned from NECC play tonight, and that would be Kiriko, who's the new support, who we will probably see a lot more of next week just to counter a lot of these negative effects, as well as Bastion and Torb, who have ha been having some bugs with the new release of Overwatch 2 and have been removed for co from comp play at the moment.
And something to note of Overwatch 2, there was a two-week break in our Overwatch gameplay here. Not because we didn't have matches, because we just couldn't get them, but it was because, in fact, MCC gave these players two weeks to get used to the new Overwatch 2 mechanics and get used to the new champions and their new ults. Correct. And interrupting you here real quick, we just saw NTC take out uh, all five of our players for WCU Crimson, and they are just now respawning. And Nono what? was hard staggered there. I don't know why he didn't just peel out instead of trying to hold points. Seems like Nona may have been trying just to delay and get that extra few percent because that may be, that very well may be the difference in this match. It looks like we're about to have another full five on five here. There's something else to note of Overwatch. And we, we do see EMP come out in the back line. Uh, they find Megusaka for it. We do see Trans come out uh, from Majarshan. And um, we're diving. We push them back to a point, but we still have not found a single kill in favor of D WCU. As we see Majarshan and Ultra Cook both go down as well, with the Genji still diving in, just trying to get a few extra picks if he can get a stagger here. And here we see WCU looks like they are regrouping, trying to get that other get another big team push. And NTC is quickly climbing back in this game. Now at 50% of their needed time on point to be able to get this and take that first game. Correct. Uh, and to take a point completely, uh, it's something I researched last season in Nationals just to look into it. Uh, the max time it takes to capture a point is two and a half minutes if you are constantly on it. So all it takes is two and a half minutes uncontested and NT NTC does get this point right off the bat. But we are seeing some strong fights coming out from both sides. We do see nano about to be ready for both teams as well as pulse bomb and diva self-destruct ready for wcu we'll see if those alts play a big factor here in terms of uh how this fight goes but nc wcu need, really needs to take control here but doesn't look like they quite can almost a nona is going for touch though which is ideal but we do see genji about to have blade genji is nanoed and we see Genji finding the kill, which will put this ma the match up 1-0 in favor of NTC. Close fight there at the end, and a wonderful control by NTC. You have to give them credit where credit is due, but it is unfortunate for Mountaineers that they couldn't quite pull that one out in the beginning. Got up really high really early, but they couldn't quite finish it. Yep. And now we're going to, after this play of the game, we're going to take a short break just to swap over the maps and... Uh, figure out what's going on in terms of WCU.
And welcome back to WCU Crimson versus NTC. I'm Jojo's Mojo, joining with Disagree, and now joining us, S-Boy. S-Boy also having experience in Overwatch, and both S-Boy and Disagree on WCU Slate, which we'll be playing later tonight on the NACC stream, but right now it is WCU Crimson taking the spotlight. We're on Eichenwald <laughs> this evening for the second map. Uh, S-Boy is a sub-tank for WCU Crimson, so when he showed up, we thought he might give us a little bit more insight on what WCU Crimson has been working on and practicing on throughout the Scrim series and this. Uh... And uh, as we see their hero picks here, we can see what they have been working on. I've gotten a little insider knowledge here. Um, they're running the D.Va with specifically the um, Echo, and their plan here is to like have D.Va Echo go kind of face tank, face tank Far front line while um, actually wait, they're not running the tracer. This is a little less what like what they plans. talked about. Um, but the idea here is they have the D.Va Echo. And D.Va will support Echo as best she can with the, the, the defense matrix, making it so that Echo just kind of gets to fly around 4 free. And she'll kind of get to do that with no hit scan on the enemy team. And here we see the first, what looks to be somewhat decent fight coming from WC and NCC of this, at least this, this series. If memory serves, it's just a one to one comparison of who can capture the objective first and then escort the payload as far as possible. That is correct. Uh, we do see Diva immediately getting DMAX here, something that uh, Dragorio has been very good at doing. And we do see a wipe in terms of WCU, and they'll just reset and let. NTC take the point. We're getting a few hero changes here. Uh, Meg is swapping over. Some are already in the back line though, harassing Meg. Meg. Jarshan. We see Nona switch over to the Zarya, considered one of the stronger tanks right now in the meta. And then Meg is swapping over to the BAP, hopefully to get use out of the Immor on the Summer, who's constantly harassing the back line. Which. As you've heard me commentate a couple times last season and this season, I'm honestly surprised that Zarya is so well high in the meta, as a majority of Overwatch players, tanks specifically, feel felt that Zarya was just the Gemini twin to Doomfist or Reinhardt in some way. Or Winston. Again, the Sombers. They're dealing with it well, though. They haven't gotten oat. Dragorio going down to like 10 HP there. Negative. Fighting in the castle, but the, I don't... Oh, I see why they do the now. They get the bubbles on this end. Oh my heck, I don't... Summer isn't getting any value by just from a half of that. Oh, there it is. Going over the EMP, they deal with it extremely well, immediately picking her off, and it looks like that EMP was almost wasted. Dragorio still thinks this is winnable. And we he do does see get three. The Nano Blade come out. But Hello. looks like he's just gonna dip back to his team to. They do. They. they the NTC does get. Payload progress, though, which is, in my, I, I would consider that a win for them, and they are picking off the two that were left. It's like WCU here trying to get ready for the next big fight and trying to get ready for that five on five. Moreover, with having three of the four or three of the five ults ready and two very close to picking out, whereas NTC used three of theirs in their last fight and only two close to getting there. The two of NTC's champions close to getting their ults. 
It looks like they used the bat window. Or oh, that's a bug. No, they did use bat window. And might have been for not because they they did end up getting the point checkpoint here on Eichenfeld, and they're now in the castle phase. They they do still find the enemy Winston though. Stalling 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 them out a bit more. They do have four minutes on the clock to prevent them from getting this third 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 checkpoint. It's doable. Is within your grasp. A little bit weird this match. We don't have the director cam auto switch auto hopping for us like we did. Excuse me, in the last match, and we can't quite figure out why. Well, never mind. I'm just stupid. <laughs> Um, have Grab coming out from Nona here. They have B to, uh... Kind of... It's going to be a big fight and a decent trade so far for WCU going 2-1. 3-4-1 in this fight. Oh, they did shoot the stagger out the on up, but... Either way, we see Megu coming... Coming close to having his um, amp amplification matrix up again, and they also have uh, Majorshin's transcendence ready for when the Sombra comes in with EMP, which will probably be their initiation in this fight if they don't, if NTC doesn't want to use the Nano Blade. Oh, they choose to use the Nano Blade. Don't get the hack on the Mej, and he's here with transcendence. Uh, doesn't really help Megu though, but he can still. Combo through Transcendence. And Ultra getting knocked out of the fight there, but also trading to get Sharp taken out. And here's the advantage of, I believe, this map in particular. The defending team is right there around the corner, so they can come back and just get right back in the action. Ultra Coach looking for the copy on a Genji. He's hoping he'll get a fast way where he can turn this fight around for them. It worked. It's working out for him, though. Puck's most well-known character is Genji, so it's not a surprise that he would duplicate his main damage dealer to hopefully get some couple picks here. Here we go, WCU looking to hold out for the last minute 50, trying to push that payload back as far as they can. Quickly getting a, maybe a hero change coming here from Goob, which we do see as he switches over to Genji. Trying just to finish out the game and keep this hold, I should say. Here we see what very well could be the last big fight of this match, of this round, I should say. Depending on how long this fight stalls on for, yes, I would agree with you. But if one side dies fairly quickly, quickly here, we we do still have enough time to see at least maybe two more fights coming out of either side. We do see a grab come out though, which is big. Four zero, getting both both yeah both heals from her ultimate. And we force Dragorio to just back out of the castle. As I said, we'll see one more big fight here. We should have both support alts online for us in this fight. But they do have Winston and Genji Blade ready for uh, the recontest to hopefully get the final push for NTC. This right here, last 20 seconds before we hit overtime. We see both teams going in, trying to get ready, and trying to get that control really fast on the table. Blade, we see Trans immediately pop out to just completely counter Blade here. Which, I think Blade still has a couple seconds on it, if I'm not mistaken. But, it does look like WCU will hold this point right here. As long as nothing else goes sideways. And Dragero almost getting knocked out there, but coming, getting some health back. Almost on the brink of death, but still just survived. And WCU here getting that last push 
Knock you see Monkey actually almost c 9 his team off of point by trying to go for the pick on the Jarshan here, though. And WSU was able to hold, setting themselves up for a clean victory in this next round. Here we go, just about ready for round two. Not quite sure who's being, or heroes being chosen right now. As we will see MTC's preparation and some of WCU's for how they're gonna defend that payload right oh. out of the gate. We do see a disconnect right off the bat, but there's the pause. Okay, let's say we. Well, as we have this pause, with you two having played Overwatch, what do you guys recommend WCU do here to try and get back in this and try and take this, like try and get this payload all the way to the end? And what do you think their strengths are here, and what should they really focus on? Um, definitely, they should focus on um, mitigating the enemy dive from their uh, Winston and Genji. Um, they seem to be the biggest pains that are just getting the most value here with just. Winston being able to jump in, disrupt the entire enemy, our, our entire backline, and kind of get out for free sometimes. But with with the di with Majarshan on uh, Zen, the Discord will come in very handy here, as well as the immortality saving any anybody in the backline that is already low. Um, with that, they're um, constantly checking for the uh, the Sombra, which is good they've they've kind of mitigated her value the entire um that entire last point and it 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 showed as they swapped off Sombra and went over to uh uh sojourn instead yeah. and being a somber main um i'm surprised that Sombra is getting out as easily as she is as even though they do catch her in that back line as you say almost every time she tries to do it she does get out pretty free, so I do feel like maybe, as a Sombra main, a big issue I have that people stop me with is Junkrat Trap, which I do know Zero has a pretty dirty Junkrat, but we'll see if that actually comes out this match to deal with Sombra, but they are doing quite fine without Sombra. Or, without the Junkrat dealing with Sombra. Well, it looks like here we are... KK Nairo joining back in, and it looks like we may be underway here shortly. And here we go, three, two, and one. Here we are. Game is back up. Rust and Nairo both. Rust still having yet to select their character, but Nairo back in with what looks to be Winston, and Rust with Lucio once again. See, it's a comment I made with our when Crimson and Slate went head to head in a scrimmage a couple months ago, but. The whole staying with the same comp, if it's not working, is, I would say, hurting NTC here as they've ran this exact same comp now the past three maps. So I feel like WCU can definitely build up an immunity to this comp and know who they need to target and win. It looks like WCU's Echo trying to get up and trying to just distract for a second there. So they can really chip damage in. And so we've seen Majarshan hacked. And Majarshan seems to be, it seems that they're trying to target Majarshan. Yes, okay. definitely with the dive comp, they are trying to get into that back line and just wipe out the heals before they can even do anything with them. We see Ultra Cook very far into enemy lines here. But he is holding the healers just by himself. Uh, the Ana does find him, but we are already on point contesting it. And with how this fight is going, this might be an early cap for WCU. Oh, do we have another disconnect coming from their tank player, Kirigo? Or no? So I almost wonder if instead of being in an arena, we actually s we can actually 
almost presume here that NTC has one, if not more players joining from home or from even off campus. We don't quite know, but that would explain a little bit more why there's the disconnects. Which I would be, or well, I wouldn't be surprised if WCU actually goes for a, a uh, timeout punishment here as this is very drastically, I would say, somewhat helping um, NTC as it's at specific moments that the disconnect happens, whether it's their contesting point or at the beginning of the match when they wanted to, s when comps were being picked. But we shall see. Then again, it could also just be someone maybe kicking a cable that just unplugs yep. them from the internet and they only have a wired connection. Who knows what is going on? But if I remember correctly, the technical timeout, you do get five total minutes of that for each sport through NECC regulations. Correct. And then after that technical timeout, the team has the choice to choose to use their five minutes of tactical timeout if it's still a technical problem. Or they also have the choice to go five on four here. Or four on five. And you do see that WCU has that early capture as Disagree called earlier. You three on point trying to move that payload as far as they can, as fast as they can. Five minutes seems like a lot of time and does seem like something that can really come into effect, but it's also a lot less time than you would think. When you're playing the game and you're in the moment, it just goes by fast. We do see Tuff going largely uncontested in the skies here, I and mean, he's just doing a great job pushing the enemy team back kind of by himself, almost. As I mentioned earlier, just allowing Cup to roam the skies like this is very detrimental, I feel, to NTC. Oh, but and we then, do see a quick white from NTC there, taking yep. out three of WCU, four! Sorry, mark my... I eat my words there. Taking out four and taking out the fifth, getting that team wipe and trying to push that payload back a little bit. It looks like they only used Nano for this fight, and Nano the Genji without Blade, which... They have been doing a lot of this series, which is very interesting, as usually we see both come out at the same time, but if Dragon Rio can can just clean up with just the nano, I don't know why you'd waste blade on on trying to contest you. See the EMP coming out from uh, Sharp, and it looks like you get both the supports as intended. So he's going to have to back out, as this is already a lost fight. WCU, actually, that back out may be more beneficial than it would be harmful with almost everyone from Crimson having their ults ready to go. And as I say that, they do. Looking to have this big push to just get that payload through to that first checkpoint. Dragon Rio diving in there actually might have been the worst thing to do for that team after the dive back as it's staggered from heavily coming into this 5 ult fight. Cold looking to melt the Winston here. He is at, like, 100 HP. He's looking to get the Mega. He gets it. Coke uses the, the copy for survivability purposes, and it's just diving in the back line with Nona already there. Dragon Rio, in our back line, got one kill with his Dragon Blade. Cut getting two with his own Primal, and we do see a Primal coming out for NTC, but immediately eaten up by a grab. Here we go, looks like WCU going to get this push right up to that marker as we mentioned before. Now I do have to ask, oh. does the distance actually take effect in terms of how, like in terms of winning a round in a game like, like in a mode like yes. this, where it's yes. tied two to two. So, if w, so at this point, WCU, WCU just needs to get to that 65 mark and they have Correct. won. Correct. They don't even have to make it to the third point, they just need to get past where NTC pushed. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. So the window coming out from Megu looks to ward off the defense, but in return, oh, it, oh it's, it's even. See Winston hopping in, looking to disrupt our backline, but doesn't doesn't get any value. Dies immediately. Sharp still kind of harassing the backline, getting little to no value it seems. Yeah, I um, really. 
as a somber main, I don't find this somber game. Oh, she ends up getting picked. Unfortunate. Helpful to they are team. up one in this final fight territory. They use Beat and Nano. Manage responds with a transcendence of his own. They are melting the Genji. The Genji is gone. Very well could be the difference maker here as we see WCU trying to push back up to that payload to try and get that last little bit that they need to win yep. this game. And we see both a tank and a support go down here. And they're trying to find that last support. And it looks like they will find the last support. So it comes down to just EMP and Blade for Genji being the deciding factors it seems in this final push. Dragon Rio all the way in our back line. He got two. Megu is still up though, and it doesn't look like they will be pushing it to the end here. They'll have to regroup and look for another fight. But with all of those alts coming out, that is a very hard reset in terms of NTC as the only ult they'll probably have for this final fight that will probably lead to push will be Winston's final. While we're looking at grab as well as window and possibly Echo's duplicate. Depends, I guess, on how on how Echo uses the duplicate. Does it yep. copy that? Oh no! Primal. He does get the oh, primal in the back line, but we do decide find to use grab here. The it's entire team in a grab, picking off everyone except the Sombra, the Ana, and the Winston. Winston, we do see Winston actually, killing actually himself. falls off the map. Don't know if that was intentional. Ana is in the back line though, trying to get a few picks here. Support for support. Let's see yep. who's the better. It turns out to be Mego. Which was highly anticipated in a uh, master support versus silver support fight. I was about to say, don't sound disappointed there. We are cheering for WCU after all being WCU ourselves. They need and to... we do see the copy of Genji with him back on his main trying to find that early, um, hopefully early blade from Cuck. But they do get the sleep on him, which will... He does actually get the blade off. He gets the blade, but Let's see if will it be find... enough? Find the and it looks off the copy and ends. The user with 50 seconds left to get that extra 0.7 meters that they need to win this round. And with this reset, we will see it pushed back a little bit from the team. Nona needs to get out or decide to... But Nona is getting lit up here, trying to find a way to stay in it and just keep the pressure on so they can't keep pushing it back. So as the can get the back, I should say. I'm very surprised we haven't seen a Lucio swap from either supports here, but they are in this room with Nona, and we will have to go for a touch here. So the next death will have to probably be a swap to something that can prolong touch. This might be a heavy C9 for WCU if they're not making any movement towards card here. Both DPS ults coming out from NTC. It's we do see a touch from. Um, Nona is the only one on card though. There, but Nona does go down, and this will be another that will point be round. in favor of NTC. NTC goes up 2-0 in the series. This is a best of five, so don't count WC out yet. However, we do need to see how they come back and respond after this small break. Very much so, and we will take a small break here. After, after the play of the game, obviously. Not player the game going to Ultra getting that primal copy is what, it, is what it looks like and just lighting up the entirety of NTC putting the pressure on
Traveling to the right. Initiating the match. All right, coming into the dirt. Coming into Dorado here, looks like we will be defending first. Um, back in Overwatch 1 though, I do know we favored a dive comp on this map. And it looks like, however, switching it up for a spam comp of sorts with the Sigma and Hanzo. Keeping, actually keeping Mej in on the Zen. And um, so we do not see that swap to Goose that I noticed. A little earlier. Sigma into Winston might be a little tough um, from personal experience, but you can get you can get stuff done as the rock is a very strong ability to just throw at any dives coming your way. Uh, also to note, Sigma can does have a sort of one-shot combo with his rock and primary fire on any 200 HP hero, so maybe they're looking to use that on the Genji. So the initial dive coming in, huge purple on from NTC. Cleans up both supports, and looks like it's going to have to be a reset here. Cult also falling. Zero getting a pick onto the Winston, though. Doesn't really matter too much since the rest of her team is dead. Yeah. We'll probably see a reset here. Or, well, not probably. We will see a reset here coming from WC Crimson with the, also the swap to um, Zarya. Which Zarya did work out for them on Eichenwald. However, I did notice towards the end there, Nona didn't seem to have a whole lot of charge. Yeah. Probably because the enemy team realized they, they should stop firing at the bubbles. Which, NT, NTC is playing into the age old saying, if it's, if, it's work, if it's not broken, don't fix it. As they have still not swapped their comp at all, other than on third point icon walled on attack. Which you almost have to consider that that is a smarter option, keeping the same character, knowing who you are playing, and knowing yep. how to play them, instead of constantly switching between, between, which can cause confusion for the enemy, but also can cause confusion for yourself, thinking you have one ability when you really have a different one. Correct. Which, I have done that multiple times from an Overwatch player, where I thought I was still on Lucio, so I hit shift to amp it up, and I shoot a sleep dart straight into the floor. We do to a Genji Blade coming in here. Trying to find Nona. It does look like they will find Nona. So that is a full team wipe minus Zero, who is currently hiding in the shadows. Megu is actually still on cart. Oh, Megu it, was on cart. I did not see that. Keeping it tested. Nobody noticed until he died there. I was going to say nobody noticed until he got noticed and was just lit up in his entirety. We do see Sombra still just holding the top line, trying to get some... She's definitely looking for an EMP here. Yep. Waiting for. Oh. We'll probably see an EMP. Drops it early. Mano here, yep. Right there, cleaning up. Uh, they popped all the ults there, which is honestly surprising. They popped every ult they had just to get this last point. No, no, does use the grab. Doesn't. Huck finds one with his Dragon Blade, but it's probably all for naught since they do have a second point here. WCU here looking like they really need to take a step back and reconsider how they want to approach this fight just so they can keep this point back from three and keep it early on in this checkpoint system. But it looks like NTC is going to get a, go ahead and get a good push out of this reset. We do see Zero having dragons here, which may or may not come in handy depending on how she hits them on the enemy team. As this is a big chokey point here. She does spam it directly on cart, which it does Has not a find lot. almost anyone. Doesn't find anyone as the enemy Lucio comes out with his feet, negating a lot of the damage dragons would have caused. But they do find both the supports winning the fight. Yep. 
Don't know if that was bad positioning from them or just some lucky shots. As I was saying at the beginning of the stream, Zero is one of the key factors in a lot of WCU comps with Jake with Ultra Cuck being the other one. So I would I would give it to Zero with just hitting those headshots she needed to hit just to take out the DPS. Or the supports, I mean. We do see Blade and Nano very close. They will NTC will probably choose to engage. They use Mega Saga pops the the bat window and Zero gets an excellent shot onto Dragorio. We do see Nano or I mean sorry, Blade come in as Dragorio is dead. So we still might see that nano blade, but it does look like Majorshin is holding on to Trans at the moment just for that one occasion. However, Trans being the ability that it is, it only heals 300 HP per second, if you didn't know, and you can still combo Genji Slash and a, and a Swift Strike with Nano and kill any 200 HP hero. Um, we do see a swap to Hog, though, yes, which is Nona, something I just noticed. Nona is on Hog now. Um, being Hog has just Hook, which is a 20 meter radius that you don't want to be in, that in and of itself creates a lot of space. And here comes the blade with the nano, finding Zero, finding Mega Saka's ammo field. But we do see Trans come out, and it does look like that will be all that is found in that fight. So we lose one DPS while they lose their tank. So that was definitely a trade in favor of WCU there. Zero is in the back line harassing Mej. Uh, both our DPS come to the rescue. Get an excellent pick on. You see onto Nona Dragorio. popping his uh, ult there. Popping whole hog. Yep. Getting both the supports and pushing anybody else out of the uh, the, the building here. And we're about to see dragons in favor of Zero, and we're also about to see Sojourn's ult, whose name I cannot remember. It is called Overclock. Okay, thank you. Where Ultra Cup will more than likely just start sniping the crap out of their team as his Rogue will be fully charged for, I think it's 10 seconds? Approximately, yes. I mean, I'm not sure about the sonar use there as there are just windows you can look through, but it, anything is helpful. Maybe you trying to- Maybe he comes from behind. They do find Ultra Cook and Majorsha there and Mega Saka. They that is, are. That is a three man wipe. Almost and four. And Zero does Zero get the pick on Drag. Drago. Yep. It's just Hog and Hanzo. Now it's just Hog, and they're getting a slow, steady push on Kurt here. It's go time. We do see Hog getting all we of do his see overclock, overclock come out. coming out from Ultra Cuck. And oh. we see the payload get stopped here. Finds one with it. Uh, that's all he will get, but he does look like he might be able to get the honor. He does. And he hits the Genji here, trying to get a reflect on the orb, which would be big if he actually hit it. We do see a disconnect coming from Kikaniro again. Uh, and At I this guess, point, you kind of have to question what the actual reason is. Yep, and last time it was the disconnect. They blamed it on Overwatch logging them out, but... We haven't seen any other player so far this match get logged out, so seems to be. I honestly question if this is being used as a tactical timeout, but not really playing into it. But I'm not 100 percent sure, as Overwatch has been having bugs and a bunch of issues this first two weeks of Overwatch too. <laughs> In their defense, we do see Nairo almost immediately trying to get back in and just mm -hmm. hopping back into the game. So it almost as if they're not using it as a timeout, but it is actually something either wrong with the computer or the connection. Which is fair. Which is something that uh, old fans of you would know about me is I'm very pessimistic when it comes to people abusing the system. Recalculating. <laughs> And something to keep in mind here is that while it may not be an intentional disconnect, oh, it may very the well Lucio. be used. The Lucio's in the old defender spawn underneath. I think Nona knows, but he doesn't choose to push him. He is alone. He's looking for it. He knows someone's down there. Will they? F will Nona find the pick? Oh, Lucio's getting out. He gets out. Unfortunate. That would have been a huge pick. And, I mean, he's, he's, he's going for it. He misses the hook, unfortunate. 
He get, Tony gets, does get purple here and pops Nate, which will lead to him going down. We do see window pop, which Zero does shoot a dragon, finding one, but Dragorio comes in with a swift strike, nano to finding the other three. <laughs> There's no other explanation with that. But here we are going into overtime. WCU really quickly needing to find a way to get this team wipe. But it's going to be very difficult with two, almost three ults ready to go for NTC. There goes Blade finding Zara right off the bat, which is going to be He is down to two. Uh, they did get picks on both the supports. It seems like an even fight now, though. Never mind, it's just Winston on point. And if WCU takes Winston here, then that will put them in a, in a spot to where they can still come back and get this game and keep this series alive. Yep. So it's really going to be interesting how WCU comes out of the gate. We did at the end there see the switch to, I don't know the hamster's name, but we did see Tracer come out. Wrecking yes. Ball. Wrecking Ball, that's right. So Wrecking Ball, we saw a Reaper swap on Zero. Or Ultra. I don't know. We saw Zero swap over to Tracer at the end there. Yep. And we did see the swap to Moira and Lucio as just that hard contest get back to point as quick as we could. And I was I think that they all just kind of went for a rush of whoever they knew could do the most damage per second just to get NTC off and get that contest and get that just final push in to stop them in their tracks. Yep. And now we're gonna have to see how NTC holds and how WCU carries. And they're not switching off this comp. They this is their bread and butter comp. They're actually running every map now. So that's but. not quite right. We do see a switch from Rust. Oh, yeah, we there, do. There is a Zen a in Zen play now. Yeah. now. And we do see Nona switching back over to the Diva. And we do see Ultra switching back to the Echo as well. Which we see Ultra Cook trying to uh, murder himself in spawn. Megusaka is not allowing that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> they do not want to give away their team comp by accidentally dying in spawn. That is fair. Um, classic red roof hold by Genji Winston here, um, with the supports holding on above the choke in the little bridge. Nona coming out on the diva. Sombra is down under, by the way, for any of those curious where she was. And for those of us who are not quite aware, what is the uh, Red Roof thing with Winston and Genji that you guys are mentioning? Because those of us, as I said, there are some people who may be watching this that don't quite know what's going on. Ah, uh, well, most, the Red Roof is just this red building here on the corner, and um, it is kind of um, a, I, maybe, at least in my rank, ranking of play, it's a common uh, strategy to just put any mobile heroes up there that can just kind of look down and get easy easy damage onto anybody below while also having the ability to retreat and to the safety of the roof and not really get picked off themselves while also having line of sight from any supports that may be on this high ground that we're seeing a fight break out on well, there you have it and what we did see quickly while we while Espoy was describing what that red roof was what that red roof defense was we did see a quick team wipe against western colorado although it was a little staggered with diva getting wiped first and then the rest following in due time but we do see wcu regain control of the payload and starting to make their push up over to checkpoint one they uh didn't take the advantage of having both so oh they do get the initial pick on the somber here uh, this is probably what they need to just get this point for free. Jaguario is coming up to a blade. They do have nano. They might use it in this fight. Rust, Rust, Rusty Wood, Rusted Wood trying to contest cart but dies for it. They end up choosing not to use any ultimates for this fight and back away. Uh, Nona and Ultra Cuck going for a super deep super far up hold they to do find winston they do find winston this is and actually drag. they are and winston gets a disconnect once again so a pause not coming here there they're looking as to pause. i say that there it goes and again me being my rule lawyer yourself uh they actually could not cause that pause there call that pause there as nona did point out as it was in the middle of a fight But it does seem like Nona is allowing them to take it. Yes. Uh, this hyper aggression we did see that end up le ended up leading to them getting a few picks was excellent. That's exactly what they need to get this cart going. 
largely uncontested onto the second point. But as, being that, I have to ask though, being that Nairo did disconnect, does that mean he immediately comes back in and has his hero already like able to just hop in and get back into the action? Because if that is the case, that get, that does give NTC a distinct advantage here. That is actually fair. Uh, he, he, with yeah, Winston it, going down there, he will be fully respawned when he loads back in. That is That is true. He will not have the penalty of the respawn timer and able to just spawn in and immediately. Which is actually that is very interesting because I think now that you pointed that out, almost every, every disconnect time, from Winston every has time been that. Every time he's died, there has been a disconnect from him. Unknown if this is just to make it so the respawn is faster. Right, but... But here we see with NTC having three of their ults, same as WCU. WCU closer to their fourth and fifth as well. That Winston disconnect does set the Winston back on Primal Charge though, which I don't know why you would do that other than the fast respawn, but even then I'd still prefer having my ult over being right back in the fight. Yes, Winston's Primal is like a second life, basically. Healing you up to full and giving you a massive HP pool. They do pull out the see Nano Blade. Come in finding both DPSs as well as the Immo field from Kuk. Or Megusaka, I mean. Uh, but we do see Majarshan popping the trans. It is a double from the Diva Bomb. It, it's an even fight almost. I think it's. The NTC is actually down one. They're finding the Genji. Trying to lift They're for sure. Trying line. to get it. First down. You see Diva going in just to finish that Genji, even though it will probably cost her her life. But that is almost a very fair trade, as we were looking yep. earlier. Drag Air, Drago, Drago Rio, I think is how we're going to pronounce it, or even just Drag would work. Yep. Um, being the highest ranked on that team, chasing down that Genji, not necessarily the worst idea. We do see Beat coming out, as well as copy, which Cup did copy the uh, Winston taking the primal. We see Zero. Dipping back, possibly gonna. S nope, they're just waiting for Megu. Which um, which, which I believe is a pretty smart move, trying to get a couple other people yep. ready to go push that point, and yep. getting that final oh. piece of the team in a oh, great. They find see the Sombra with the sonar. Seems as though Nona was slept, couldn't capitalize on that information. They do get the Winston again. That was a great pickup from Zero, though, possibly saving Nona there with the Diva going very low. We do see Drag Arrow getting that triple kill on Ultra Zero and Megasaka and Majarshan now with the fourth. These EMPs just keep coming and coming. Yep. We do see Cake and Hero about to have Primal again. Uh, and we see they... Nona having self destruct as well as Zero having dragons. So, Indeed. two very damaging ultimates here. And a minute 56 left in this section to try and get that payload over to check over to that second checkpoint, adding more time and a greater chance for a better push at getting that final escort down to take this game to game or to take this match to game four. And it will give them a minute and a half if I'm not mistaken, since it is point two, correct? Escort? Um that is correct. They will get another minute and a half before reaching the second checkpoint. So uh, dragons come up from zero. They do find notifies the pick on the Lucio. We do uh, see a nano, a nano blade come blade out. Does come out. Finding only Bajarshan though, and the Emo Field, and there it finds the other DPS, or the other heals. We see Primal popped here just as a big contest, with Cuck getting back in with his Reaper Teleport, and it does look like Re Ultra Cook will go down, and this will be... No, no, again, d Max, the last yep. one alive, they are looking to stagger him. This, this is gonna hurt. Yeah, this puts him back, like, 10... Which also makes this... Nona is unhappy in the chat. Yeah, which also makes this a final fight territory at this point with Nona respawn. Indeed. They only have Winston Bubble to try to mitigate this Diva Bomb, though. They might have Lu Lucio uh, beat in time for when they choose to use it, but... They do go for the behind... They do go choose to push from behind the chapel, which isn't a bad idea. Majarshan is kind of alone, though. Somebody needs to help him. Majarshan does go down. Uh, Immorphil is a little too late. They do find we do see a pick Winston. from Kick and Hero. Um, the Megu. But um, it, it does look like this will be final fight territory if we do not see a touch here. As there are seven seconds left. 
Nona is going back to cart though, so cart is all yeah. the way back in the alley. Zero gets a pick on to me. We do, we do see Blade up though for Dragon Hero, which will be the deciding factor. He does find Dragon Hero out of the Blade, popping Blossom. Pops Blossom and, and self destruct. Yep. Mej is looking to be on cart duty. They yep. get cleanup picks. They probably will be able to cap for free yep. here. And they will have a minute and a half to get this final push underway, or else NTC will take the series 3 0. And it's going to be right. very interesting to see how things play out here with this last minute and a half, as well as that overtime period. We cannot forget that overtime yep. period can cost you the game if you are not careful and not smart about how you play it. Correct. Sombra getting, doing a little ring around the rosy action and with the high ground there, getting away. We do see Majarshan practically being on cart duty this entire final point. Sombra's looking for a hack on him. Sombra gets a hack on Majarshan, they dive in. They do find Majarshan with the snipe and this looks like this we're back in final fight territory for point here as we see the entire team go down minus cuck and diva cuck is at one hp does get found with a swift strike from dragon Rio. and nono taking the time here to reset and try and find the team once again to try and get that five on five yep. going back we see nano and beat on w or on ntc side as well as only transcendence from Majarshan on WCU's side. However, Tracer Pulse Palm does build fairly quickly, so she oh, gets hacked, and there and dies. that Jazz Transcendence comes out a little too late. Yep. But it does allow us to get Cart taking out Kikaniro again, but they do find Majarshan. Zero is on Cart, pushing by herself, and it looks like she's currently uncontested doing this. And there comes the con. There comes the prime. As you say it, they have Diva Ult and there's TMP. Kicking arrow the game. Nona again. Zero finding rusted with the pulse bomb. And we, we are in on cart. Based Both, this looks like they might be doable. Oh no, Dragon Age like, gets popped. He gets a hack on the mage. But we do see Cut coming in, being able to touch a soldier. But this might be it, as there is there, and that is it. That will be match point, which after that last disconnect, even though I don't want to see the worst in people, I do feel like Kekekiro was just disconnecting to get that quick respawn. It's very possible, but at the same time, we don't necessarily know Correct. that. And we're not going to make accusations here. Correct. We are just note pointing out something that could have been a possibility, right. but again, we are trying to see the best in people, yep. and I'm going to go ahead and assume that that was a hardwired connection with no Wi-Fi compatibility, and it was just a bump of the Ethernet cable. And I will also go with that, as, as our co-commentator said, we don't want to assume the worst. It's just happy little coincidences. But um, as we said earlier, WCU Slate will be on the NECC channel, which we will be hosting here. Uh, and that will be starting in about 45 minutes. So, uh, and you'll see S Boy and myself there going head to head against Gray's Harbor Chokers and um, Crunchy the, Leafs team. And with that being said, I am JoJo's Mojo with S Boy and Disagree signing off for now. Thank you all for tuning in, and we will see you next stream.